Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I apologize about not posting in many, many weeks at this point. It's uh, been, I don't know, almost three months at this point. Uh, I had a super, super busy spring, and so I'm finally at a point where I can start thinking about posting some videos again. So I do hope to post more frequently here coming in the, in, in the coming weeks. And uh, to start us off, I thought I would share this project I've been working on that I'm really excited about which is my dream chicken composting run. And so this is basically mimicked after, modeled after uh, Sean Dombrowski's uh, system uh, on edible acres. So most anyone watching this channel probably knows about edible acres. And so uh, basically his system is using a whole lot of carbon inputs and a whole lot of uh, sort of like food scraps and things like that. He's able to turn all that into some really beautiful compost for his gardens and for his nursery work. And it's a whole entire system and workflow that he's developed and he's shared it over the years. And I'm basically just stealing some of his ideas for my own chicken run and my own chicken composting system. And so I thought it'd be a fun place to start uh, in terms of getting my videos back on track. It'd be fun to start with this new chicken run that I'm building. And so this is a little overview. So this is the setup on my farm. Here's Black Kitty. Say hi, Black Kitty. <laughs> uh, is I've got these two rectangular paddocks, basically. So you can see we've got a post here, post, post, post. So this rectangular region here that you're seeing is like the... Uh, uppermost portion it's kind of on a hill this is the highest point here and then it goes downhill from here and it goes downhill over uh, to this other rectangular portion here and so we're gonna start materials here I have an unlimited supply of pre-consumer food waste and I have an unlimited supply of wood chips so it's all gonna start here and then kind of like what Jeff, Jeff Lutton does in his greening the desert project we'll kind of pile it up the chickens will kick it apart and then you pile it up again a little bit downhill, the chickens kick it apart again. Pile it up again, a little bit further downhill, the chickens kick it apart again. And it just kind of cycles down the hill so that by the time it gets to the end, the chickens have gone through it many times over, uh, kicked it out, kicked it around, manured in it, and it's highly decomposed and highly uh, nutrient rich. And so by the time it reaches the end here, it should be really, really nice compost, and then I can screen it using one of our trommels. And in addition to that, I'm thinking of some really cool ideas. Um, specifically, you'll notice that this is a really large system. And so we're not going to have that many chickens. We're probably going to have on the order of a dozen hens and maybe one rooster together with some ducks and some geese. And you might say, if you're going to have a dozen hens and a rooster and a couple of ducks and some geese, this seems like entirely too much space. What are you going to do with all this space for that few birds? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break this up into paddocks. And the compost that's going to be made in here is going to be so nutrient rich. Anything I plant in here is just going to take off like a rocket, I think. And so it's large enough, I can actually break this up into paddocks using fencing and what have you. And I can separate off some regions and I can start growing, say, sunflowers or corn or melons or something that really is a big, heavy feeder. And so it's big enough where I can take part of this out of production during the season, out of the hen's uh, play area, so to speak, and I can turn it into vegetable production and it'll be so nutrient rich that it'll just take off. So I can then use that to feed to the goats or I can use it for our family, or I can use it to feed back to the chickens. I can use it to feed to the worms. And so that's one thing I'm gonna do. Uh, and then there's something really cool that I was thinking earlier is that you could actually put some greenhouse plastic in some of these areas and actually have little greenhouses so that we can grow even during the winter, some lettuces, chard, uh, things like that, cooler season vegetables. Um, I'm also going to have a pond. I'm going to have the pond on this side. And the pond won't be open to the animals all the time. Uh, it'll just be open uh, some of the time. So it's not going to be a total mess all the time because I know ducks are extremely messy. So I'm going to have a pond. And that pond is going to get full of manure and, you know, all kinds of nutrient from their feet and from their 
um, you know, tracking the nutrient into the pond, I'm going to stick a pump in there and then I'm going to pump that up into our garden area. And so our whole garden area is going to be drenched in really nutrient rich um, water from the pond that we're going to have in this chicken run. So I'm really, really excited about that. So in addition to the nutrients that will be used either in the chicken run or, or in the garden right next door, I also plan on using those nutrients out on our pastures. So right over here, this is considered the end of the chicken run right here. So this is the far end of it. There's this post here and this post here. And then there's this opening right here. This is where their, um, this is where their hen house is gonna be. This is where their uh, coop is gonna be. And right here, there's gonna be a doorway. And I'll be able to open that doorway and I'll be able to bring the tractor in right here and load the tractor bucket full of this really nutrient rich compost and leaf mulch and wood chip mulch and everything. Tons and tons of nutrients in it. And then I'll be able to take that out to the fields and basically um, inoculate our fields with all kinds of great bacteria and fungi and also feed it with all the great nutrients that are coming out of the chicken composting system. And so this is gonna be a great big gate that'll be big enough to actually allow the tractor bucket in to be able to load it. We come up this little uh, walkway here all the time. So we're in this area all the time in, in the permaculture zoning uh, breakdown. You might call this a zone one. And so we're actually gonna have hen nesting boxes right here so that you'll be able to come out of the back porch, come out just like you normally do, and then boom, right here, the hen boxes are gonna be here. You'll be able to collect the eggs uh, every single day without too much effort. Because right now our chickens move around all the time. And so it's kind of a pain to go collect the eggs because they're always moving. And so this is where the nesting boxes are gonna be. We'll have a gate here. And so we'll be able to bring materials down from our driveway here. You can see I've got big piles of wood chips and stuff, uh, leaf mulch, things like that. So we'll be able to bring that stuff down here. We'll be able to get into the gate easily, dump in wood chips, use it to cover up, keep the flies down, keep the smells down. And so also we'll be able to bring in the uh, pre-consumer food waste into this area. The chickens will kick it around, kick it around all the way down this hill. You can see I've been building this rock wall, which it's highly uh, unprofessional. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I literally just started gluing rocks together, basically, but it's it's rock solid, so to speak. And so even though it's ugly, it is highly functional. So they'll be kicking all around down here. I got this wall to keep everything inside. Uh, we'll turn the, turn the material so that it starts going out into this larger area here. And so that's the flow, is bring the materials in here, the chickens work through it and slowly work it down the hill, across over here, and then the loading zone is back there. We'll be able to bring the tractor in, get it all loaded, use it in the greenhouse, use it in the garden, and use it out in the fields. You can see we've got our sheep, or some, some goats in the back there. Um, and so it integrates with the house, it integrates with the chickens needs, it integrates with the garden needs, and it also integrates with the uh, broad acreage use out on the acreage to improve soil quality, increase soil fertility, improve pasture yield, decrease costs for the goats and sheep, um, increase nutrient uh, density of the goats and sheep. Uh, the benefits to this are just, they just keep coming and coming. So, I'll kind of bring you along as we finish this up. Now, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done at this point, so the design has has been kind of thought out, as you can see. Uh, you can see I've got quite a lot of the posts all cemented in, so most of the frame is set up. I just need to uh, install one more post here. I also need to figure out what I'm going to do for our nesting boxes that are going to go here. So I, I didn't cement any posts here because I wanted to see what type of nesting boxes we were going to use. Depending on the nesting boxes that we use, we'll set the posts accordingly so that the nesting boxes are integrated into the frame itself, into the frame, into the cage of the, of the chicken run.
Um, I also have a little bit of cement that I'm going to pour along this edge here. I'm also going to build a little bit more rock wall on the back edge there. So that rock wall is going to form an L shape. So this longer rock wall piece here, as well as some rock wall along that back edge. We need to install the wire paneling across here. And I also need to build the chicken coop itself, which is going to be on that back wall. Our bedroom is just right this way. And so we don't want the roosters too close to our bedroom because they'll wake us up in the morning. So we'll have the coop out here. I just need to build it. And then, like I said, this little gateway here is going to be to bring the tractor and start moving nutrients out where they're going to be used. So again, I apologize that I haven't updated uh, recently and I hope to update a lot more soon. But I hope this gets you excited about the things I'm working on at the moment and I hope you come along. So I uh, will see you in the next video.